Hi, my name is Hans Peter Meyer, and I'm doing a series of interviews <coughs> calling it the 3 by 2 by 8 series of conversations on sustainability in the Comox Valley, and today I'm talking to uh, Brian Rice here at Courtney Toyota, top of Ryan Road. Uh, very interesting site, and hopefully we'll get to talk about that. Um, Brian, you've had a look at the draft goals and objectives for the sustainability strategy? Here? Yes, I have. Thanks, yes. And um, you've thought about this deeply, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, sustainability to me is all about the environment. Mm -hmm. And it's about recycling, it's about emissions, it's about consumption. In our case, and that's a big thing for you guys. Yes, yeah. it is. Because, yeah. like, as you said, you guys are the, the bad guys. That's you right. You sell cars. You're yes. in the business of, of getting us in these cars that we that's right. can't get away from. And our industry's a big bad guy right. out there right now. So, when you look at the sustainability strategy, uh, what excites you about it? Uh, the opportunity going forward to create a more sustainable environment, both for ourselves, our own corporation, our own facility, and also for the products that we supply to our customers and consumers in the public sector. So, uh, from what we said, what you said before, you, I mean, you actually see some of what's coming out of this is actually good for your business. Yes, we do. Um, for example, hybrid technology, we're in the forefront of that. It's great technology. It's here for the long term. Right. Uh, emissions are down by 70% over what a regular new so would be, which so that's already ahead of the curve. So in terms of when people are supply. asking for that kind of stuff, you're actually seeing this is you're in a good place for that. When people say we want less emissions, we want less uh, dependence on, on the oh, internal yeah, combustion. Yeah, better fuel economy. Right. Yes. Okay, so um, when you look at the, the sustainability strategy, what do you see are the challenges of implementing it? One of the biggest challenges we have here, Hans, is such a large geographical area for the amount of population we have in the Comox Valley. Mm -hmm. About half of our population lives in rural areas and then choose that because of the aesthetics and the reasons they came here in the first place, while still having access to amenities of the urban centers. And I think going forward, our three urban centers are going to have to create more population density in order to accommodate better forms of alternative transportation. That is to say, a lot of population lives 10, 15 kilometers away from the urban centers. And mm -hmm. it's not feasible for people for walking or scooters or other forms of transportation. And if we get more density in the urban centers, We'll be able to accommodate other forms of transportation that we have right now. Well, that's not a good thing for you as a seller of cars, though, is it? No, it's not. But we'll still um, we'll get our share. People still gonna want to have an automobile from time to time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the big challenge you see in implementing a transportation um, strategy is that we need to change how we how we look at how we live in this place. I, I think somewhat. Yes. I mean, we simply can't send a bus up to every rural road. It's just it won't be possible. Maybe in 20 or 30 years, but at this point in time. It's, uh, it wouldn't be sustainable on its own. And we still have a lot of dependence on the automobile, and the automobile isn't going away, it's going to be around for a long time to come. But having said that, we need to find other forms of being an automobile to depend less on oil and have better emissions than they have today. Right, so what, uh, how do you see yourself, or you know, Courtney Toyota, playing a role in, in making the Comox Valley a more sustainable community? Well, our corporate sustainability starts right here at home, uh, with uh, the things that we do in our business operations, mm -hmm. with our new facility in terms of things that we've done in terms of storm water management, in terms of um, low power electrical mm -hmm. on our uh, lighting systems, um, in terms of our recycling initiatives and the things that don't go into the landfill. So that's, that's our main thing at home is to reduce that. And, and, and do you see uh, other businesses coming to you and, and, and you know, showing an interest in how you've done this? Um, I haven't so far, but I'd be willing to tell, uh, talk to them. Right, because I, <laughs> I, mean, I know a little bit about it because I did some, uh, some research around yeah. a number of projects on the island, and yours was one of them. Uh, this is a fairly new site, you're only a couple of Eight, years. 18 here. months, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've got uh, you know, low-tech, in some ways very low-tech, but, but ahead of the curve. Uh, treatment of, of stormwater here. Mm -hmm. uh, how many how many acres of of, of, a, of a impermeable surface do you have? Uh, two and a half acres of pavement and rooftop. Right. Yeah. So that's a big that's, that's a, a big problem. Yes, sitting on top of like a major aquifer here, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you guys, it was imperative for you guys to, to do this clean. Yes, it was. We were didn't want everything rushing off the property and heading off down down the hill. We have agri agricultural land next to us. 
Uh, we deal with gasoline, we deal with oils, we deal with detergents, and we want to make sure that we retain that on site and manage that ourselves. And our stormwater management system is part of that. Now, was this a requirement from the city? It was at this point in time, but originally we did a design program. Uh, we hadn't talked to the city, we didn't know it was a requirement at that time. Mm -hmm. And we had that early in the design process to, to ensure that was in place before a developer ever started. Right, and, and ICBC next door was also a, a, a head Yes, of they had done that as well, yeah. Right. Yeah, they're a few years ahead of us in terms of the building. Yeah. So, um, what was it like uh, working with the city in terms of bringing in these new, new kind of approaches to doing stormwater? Well, the city is very much on board. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, they really didn't put up any obstacles or roadblocks to what we designed at all in terms of landscaping, storm management, uh, site location. They're, they were great to work with. And mm -hmm. I think because we're somewhat ahead of the curve, um, they worked with us very well on that. Right. But, but you're also saying that not many people know about the story. Like, you know, I mean, we drive by here, we see a very pretty car lot. I mean, you've got trees, you get your cars parked in the trees, mm -hmm. you've got, you've got a, a, a grassed in swale, or that's a ditch, it's a fancy name for a ditch, basically. But that, that basically does all kinds of cool stuff that we never imagined ditches mm -hmm. did. I mean, I, I, I talked to the engineers who were putting some of this stuff together, and it was a real education for me. Um, because most of us drive by and we have no idea that what you're doing is, uh, what, or what you've done with the site is so, so uh, innovative. Well, it makes us feel good going forward that we've done the right thing and uh, we won't have to rip it up in the, in the future. So. Right. Um, thanks for playing along with my three questions. Okay. So now, this is about a conversation <laughs> and, I, and we have some mm -hmm. time left. We've got a couple minutes. Um, so we're like talking about the sustainability of Comox Valley. You've lived here how many years? 26 years. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I'm as you as a the whole time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I'm assuming you want to be here a few more, and uh, you've got some family here. In so, the business. Uh, yeah. Uh, sustainability is, affects us in lots of different ways. What would you want to add to the conversation or put on the table for us to think about? Well, I think um, uh, from an automotive standpoint. Um, my crystal ball is a is to have a tremendous less dependence. That's the wrong way of saying, but much less dependence on on oil. And my my future would be a hydrogen fuel cell electric motor vehicle mm -hmm. that burns no fuel whatsoever. That its byproduct is water. There's no emissions, and we kill the internal combustion engine altogether. That's what How's that? Well, that's a great. Wouldn't that be exciting? Yeah. And, and that, and it's not. Uh, the technology is there. Mm -hmm. The affordability is not there. But one right. day it will be there. Mm -hmm. Fifteen years ago, hybrid technology wasn't available to the consumer. And today it is. So let, let's let's talk about hybrid for a second. So, uh, what percentage of your sales are hybrid? Well, that's an interesting uh, uh, question, Hans, because uh, in 2008, when fuel went to a dollar forty a liter. Right. Our hybrid business represented 18% of all our new vehicle sales. Wow. And even in the last half of 2008, when fuel came down to around the dollar a liter sort of uh, thing, and uh, hybrid uh, demand softened somewhat, we still finished up the year around 13% of all new cars were sold were hybrids. Right. Our Prius, our Camry, and our Highlander SUV. And we see that that future as a, a, a good future for Toyota and for the for the sustainability strategy. Okay. Thank you very much for taking this time to be part of this, and I encourage anybody else just to pick up a camera and talk to you know anybody in your family or your friends. Just ask them three questions. You know, uh, what excites you about the fact that we're having a sustainability strategy here in the Comox Valley? Uh, what do you see are the challenges of, of implementing the strategy, and uh, what are you going to do, or your business or your organization? How are you going to help make sustainability a reality here uh, in this beautiful place we call home? Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Hans, for your time. Sorry. Good. <laughs>